Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, time to bring you more stratospheric data. And uh, we are now up to the 10th thing, so on the 10th episode of uh, Stratwatch. So we're going to bring you up to date with all of the latest developments stratosphere-wise over the Arctic and the North Pole. We're going to ha have a look at forecast data as well. So sit back, relax, enjoy. And I should talk you through episode 10 of Stratwatch in a moment. Just to say that first, really, really say was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We're live at 6 p.m. actually with a, with our 10 to 14 day. So uh, I shall see you a little bit later on for that one. Please like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everybody, for a uh, dear Matt for Gav's weather vids. Hold on. <coughs> There we go. So sorry, everybody. Right. So let's start off with temperature at 10 HPA currently versus uh, average, just coming from the JMA, of course. So we did have a very significant warming of the stratosphere about a week ago. You can see that the black line there shoots up from minus 80 around the turn of the year to around minus, I don't know, probably minus 17, something like that. Um, so something like a 60, 65 degree temperature rise within a few days during the first week of January. Um, and that is a very significant warming of strategy. And very often that will probably be enough to reverse the zone of wind and be classified as a major sudden stratospheric warming. It didn't reverse the zone of wind. And so that will only go down as a minor warming, albeit it does look quite dramatic. But black is now dropping backwards again. Oh, uh, of course, we can't maintain those temperatures very long in the uh, stratosphere. So we're now back down close to minus 40, but still well above average for the time of the year. Remember, grey line is where it should be at this point in January. And uh, we should be around minus 63, minus 62, something like that. Now, the warming is moving down to 30 HPA as well. So if we have a look at that level of the stratosphere, <coughs> so sorry, once again, everybody, closer to the troposphere, of course, at 30 HPA, we see the black line is also lifting up and is well above average, getting close to uh, minus 50, something like that. Um, no, obviously that warming from 10 HPA is moving down uh, through the levels of the atmosphere to 30 HPA. But again, keep in mind, it hasn't been enough to reverse the zone of wind or indeed split vortex. So that's displaced the polar vortex. So uh, uh, this is from uh, Metro Service related GFS run. See how the blue curve has been pushed out of the pole down into the North Atlantic and into W. That's a classic displacement event following a minor SSW. Right, so let's see what happens after that then. So we get a renewed warming appearing there over Russia and Siberia, albeit, you know, not anywhere near as intense as the previous warming, but still enough to uh, keep the polar vortex displaced and rather disorganised over into uh, the North Atlantic and whatnot. Beyond that, we find that the displacement of the polar vortex is more towards America and Canada, with things continuing to warm across Northern Europe and up into uh, Russia there as well. Another warming beginning to appear on the Atlantic side of the, of the pole as well. So if we had that, when we had the major warming last week, then, uh, of course, we probably would have got a split a, a split of the polar vortex because it was being stretched to its limits at that point. So if we had a, had a secondary warming over on the Atlantic side, we probably would have split the vortex and reverse a zonal wind. That was one, one of the things that we were lacking. Um, anyway, this is how we get to the end of a GFS run. So, the Polar Vortex still in business up to the 25th of January, albeit weakened, shrunken, and, um, <laughs> you know, being, being moved around, displaced all over the place. But it's still there, actually. It's still hanging on by, <laughs> by its fingertips, really, there. Those cold temperatures at 10 HPA. If you have a look at 30 HPA, this is coming from uh, next weather. Um, so again, we can see that the, the displacement event at 30 HPA is also taking place. This is from GFS forecast charts again of course so it's displaced for the event at both uh 30 hp and 10 hp blue colors push out towards the north of europe and into uh the north atlantic as well if we push this through you will see that the displacement event continues so we actually get another warming at 30 hpa getting go there 
um, around Friday the 19th. So around 10 day time, another warming over Siberia, which kind of coincides with that at 10 HPA uh, as well. So at both levels, uh, at 30 and also at 10 HPA, uh, another warming of the stratosphere taking place there over Siberia. Just again, keeping the polar vortex displaced, disorganised and somewhat stretched and weakened right the way up to the 25th of January. You can see those blue colours. A uh, focus on Greenland, into the North Atlantic, into northern parts of Europe as well. Don't look as though the polar vortex being stretched to its limits there at uh, 10 HPA, you know, and, and still, so still um, PB disruption going on, even if we've not got an actual reversal of the zone of wind, even if we've not got a technical major SSW, uh, continued high, continue to highlight the prospect of, uh, of, of, of continued uh, PV disruption, really. So this is coming from uh, weather is cool. You see, but when we have the, uh, and this is looking at the zone of wind, the strength of the zone of wind. Oh, uh, one way that you can look at polar vortex, of course, is through the cold temperature. Let's go back to it. So those blue colours. One way of seeing the polar vortex at its roots of strategy. Another way of seeing the strength of the polar vortex is through the uh through the zone of wind and um though you can see that when we had the uh, uh, the, uh the significant warming of the strategy a few days ago so the wind did drop out to uh just there but didn't get into reverse so it needed to go down here for this warming event to be classified as a major sudden stratospheric warming uh event so a weakening yes uh via a displacement of the polar vortex but not you know not 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 um not a reversal uh, the polar vortex has since strengthened a little bit, but it's still, uh, in terms of zone of wind, but it's still uh, weaker than average. The black line there, of course, is average. If you put in the uh, GFS ensemble, you see that a further weakening of the zone of wind is likely in the coming week or so. Many of the ensemble members are dropping down to around here. One does actually get the zone of wind into reverse very briefly, um, but most of them are weakening the zone of wind anyway, so it does look as though. We are going to see further weakening and disruption of the polar vortex in the next week. However, a lot of the GFS on some of members are actually powering the zone of wind up to shock the average um, as we come towards the last stages of January. So that's a little bit of a change on what we've had through this season or, or much of this season so far. It doesn't as though the zone of wind could actually be getting stronger by the time we get through to month's end. What about if we put in the CFS? When you see that a lot of these CFS uh, runs are looking like that. Um, oh, a lot of them are keeping us out of being relatively weakened, actually, as we go through from January to February. And then a lot of them are sort of focusing on a reversal of the wind into the middle, second half of February again, which is exactly what we had last year. Because the further on we get into the winter, the greater the chance we've got of an SSW reversing the zone of wind. So it could be February that, uh, that, that set, finally gets that major SSW going reversing the zone of wind and of course that has more impacts probably on the spring again on march and april well let's have a look at some forecast data from the uh, ECMWS. so these are temperature anomalies weak temperature anomalies at 10 hpa over stratosphere so it remains above average of temperature anomaly at the moment across large portions of russia siberia and into the arctic as well 10 degrees or more above average that's left over from last week's warming of course uh, that's week two 22nd 29th of january again quite a significant warming this time focus more on the north atlantic side of the uh re of the polar region but week three sees a cool down so we actually start getting cold and average with both stratospheric temperature and from the 29th of january to the 5th of february that's when the pv might be starting to uh, power up as well by via the zone of wind. That's week four, which is the 5th to the 12th of February, and that's week five. Possibly just starting to pick up on another warming beginning to uh, get going there over uh, over Siberia, maybe. So possibly that's the one that CFS is seeing could uh, could be the killing blow <laughs> of the polar vortex and finding the zone of wind into reverse into bill the second half of february but ecm might just be starting to pick up on the first signs of that this is the mean zone of wind at 10 hpa forecast uh finally from ecm 
So, uh, as we saw, we are going to see a further weakening of the zone, and we almost set it into reverse, actually, uh, around this time next week, if the forecast is correct. We are getting very, very close to a reversal of zone winds there, as you can see by the um, on Sovel Mean, which is that thick blue line just there. But after that, the zone winds start powering back up as we go to the last week of January, returning closer to average. And they have a lot of scatter uh, beyond that into early February. No real sign of uh, of, a, uh, of a reverse of zone winds, so into uh, February. But what I think we'll be looking for over the next couple of weeks is possibly for the, 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 the on Sovel Mean do something a bit like that. I imagine it might go shrunker than average into the end of January. And um, then maybe doing something like that as we go through February. It won't look like that, <laughs> but you get the idea of what we're going to be looking for as we go through into February. Um, right, okay, so that's what you're up to date with all things stratosphere-wise. If you've enjoyed episode 10 of Stratwatch, then please give like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we're going to be back with another installment, episode 11, um, next week. Same time, same place. We're live at 6pm with our 10 to 14 days, so I shall see you later on for that one. But for episode 10 of Stratwatch, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.